It, it is a beautiful sunny day here in Dublin. So I put my coat on this morning and I went out for a walk. But it was a very short walk because it was freezing, freezing. So I came back to my flat, sat down, rolled a cigarette and wondered what will I do. So I just picked out some of my poetry books. And uh, I like poetry and I was lucky growing up in the 60s. It was a wonderful time if you liked poetry. A lot of European poets were being publish published in English for the first time and a lot of Russian poets. And I have to say that uh, probably the Russian poets are my favourite. You know the thing of if you're stuck on a desert island. I suppose if I have to choose just one poet, it would be Chukachev. Now I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong, but uh, I like his poetry. In fact, I love his poetry. I like the Lutheran service, calm and grave. I like its, I'm trying to read the print here, its ritual, it's solemn and severe. The message of those brave and em those bare and empty walls I love so. Uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm reading this from the screen in front of me and I'm recording this on my mobile phone, so I can't read it. You can probably read it better than I can. But, uh, yeah, I like, and I was reading also, I don't know, yeah, Han Chan, Han Chan, Cold Mountain. But, uh, and this was published in 1970, so there was lots and lots of really interesting poetry. And of course you had Jamie Seney and Michael Harkness and Thomas Kinsler here in, in Ireland. But if you liked poetry, it was a really exciting time. And I can remember I used to buy my poetry. There was a small shop in Grafton Street. And every time that a modern, let's say, a new, let's say, slim volume of poetry by some Irish poet came out, uh, they'd be the first to get it in. And if you weren't there within a half within a half an hour of the shop opening, if you weren't there, it would be sold out. You know, poetry really was popular back then. And as I say, you now I like Russian poets. And you had people like Yetuchenko. He used to fill football stadiums reading his poetry. Imagine that, football stadiums. But, uh, yeah, this is a video about nothing. Just me rambling on. But, uh, oh yes, one thing I... While I was rooting through my poetry, I came across this. Tom Paulin, The Argument at Great Q. Now, I'd, I'd forgotten all about this, but this is a poem by Tom Paulin, which I published in a pamphlet form, just 120 copies of it. <coughs> he had, this poem had been published twice in magazines, but never in book form. So I wrote to him, and I asked him if I could publish a small limited edition of it. And he said yes. So uh so I did. And uh it's a wonderful wonderful poem, the argument at Great Hugh. But uh and I had intended at the time I had written to a couple of American poets, Robert Pinsky and Anthony Hecht, and they had agreed to let me publish some some of some of, of their poems. Unfortunately, just at that point in time, life uh, life stuck its finger in my face, and my life went in a different direction. But uh, 
But that little pamphlet there is my only, it, that's my ticket to immor, immortality of a sort. I will be a footnote to a footnote in the various books that will be written and critiques of the work of Tom Paulin. But, uh, oh yes, I bought this, was it yesterday or the day before? can't remember. This is a, it's a painting, as you can see, on board. And it was 25 euros. And, where am I? You can see it there, just there. I don't actually like it, but I like painting and pictures and that. And I thought it was interesting. But, um, so there you are, I'm sitting here with my few books, oh yes, and Fernanda, Fernando Pessoa, another great poet. But uh, yes, I'm sitting here just doing nothing. Nothing at all, making a video about nothing.